to this thing. So let me double check. Wait, let me just quickly stop the share and double check I had video on. Yep. Okay. Oops. Ah. <laughs> Oops. Okay, and we're back. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give a quick talk about this new project that just came out a week ago, um, high five slash live. And to get into this, I want to give a little bit of a quick background of how it came to be. And maybe that all starts. Oh, I need to say admit from the waiting room. Okay. <laughs> um, I had those. Uh, it all kind of started. Maybe it started a bit like uh, 21 and 20, giving a workshop on P5 glitch and meeting Florida Fuego and staying in touch and seeing all kinds of amazing um, um, P5 plus Hydra combinations. It was like seeing what was possible in those two domains and was super inspired by, by those possibilities of joining them. And then maybe a half a year later, that year 21, talking a lot with Olivia and learning how it was possible to mix P5 and Hydra together uh, and got tons of help from Olivia Jack for like, how could we, um, maybe a super quick intro. I'm the a tool that I've made is called P5 Live. So I'm doing a lot of live coding with P5. And I was always interested, like when you make an editor, you're super biased of like, that's the tool I wanna edit in. And so I was always curious, like how could we do Hydra in this environment? Um, and we figured out that we could load the library, we could build a dynamic Hydra canvas, um, had to make like a little playground for playing with the actual Hydra. And then these were like the magical things uh, that Olivia knew how to do is that we could basically drop Hydra into a P5 layer, a create graphics layer. And that's huge that, that like Hydra could be having its canvas and P5 could receive the canvas from Hydra. Um, similarly, going the opposite way was really big, uh, that you could draw in P5, which is really big for doing text-based stuff. And then, yeah. Oh, no visual. Okay, I'm gonna not do full screen. Hey, that's a weird bug. Okay, thank you for saying something. There's visuals too, not just code, although the code is fun. Um, for some reason, when I go full screen, the visuals maybe stop. Okay, this was what I was trying to show you bringing P5, uh, Hydra into P5, having a texture that then you could put on 3D shapes or doing the opposite, drawing in P5, which has all kinds of wild, um, really approachable ways to play with, with type, 3D, all kinds of different uh, primitives and send that into Hydra as a source. And so this was also a, a huge tip um, that I learned from Olivia was that we could init the canvas of P5 and put that inside of Hydra. I ran into weird little issues that were super annoying that like noise, both tools have a noise function. Uh, so then I learned you have to scope things and that was one way to get around it. Later learning uh, that, hey, it's possible actually just to like make an alias called, oh, I even switched actually to German, that'll be tricky. Noise equals noise. And then actually I could just write noise with a Z instead of S and then it's like, oh, conflict averted. Um, another really big inspiration was, oh, I thought I had it open. Oh, I don't have it open. Nervous data, Phydra. Um, this was a huge example and inspiration of seeing all kinds of wild ways that we could play with P5 and do text. Um, manipulations in Hydra to really distort things further than P5 could do on its own. And so I got lots of inspiration from playing there. And then a big thing happened with teaching Hydra to students and asking them all to do a quick exercise and then turning in a whole bunch of homework, which is great. <laughs> them turning in a bunch of homework and wanting to view it. And so I made like a little mini gallery tool uh, so that we could just kind of like, hey, here's all the sketches people uploaded. Let's press gift and go randomly look at what people made uh, since the last time we spoke. 
And so this was just like, how can we look at a bunch of sketches together, uh, do feedback and see what kind of stuff people made. And then this was using this ACE editor, which is like the engine on P5 live as well. And so I'm super addicted uh, to this editor. I'm gonna go to one that we saw like so. Uh, Cause you can do super fun things of just like move a bit of code around, or if I modulate scale, I can duplicate lines of code and then it gets crazier and crazier um, and moving things around. And so I am got really used to this editor. This started to be a thing. And as you play with this, you realize maybe it could do a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, and the fact that the examples I had inside of P5 Live, you always had to copy paste these chunks of code. Um, so anytime you're live coding and you want to play with Hydra in P5 Live, you need like 10, 12 lines of code that don't need to be there. And so that inspired the idea of um, making an editor where those little bits of code sit in the background and you just have access to them. Um, and just thinking about like P5 is super accessible, Hydra is super accessible, they each have their total strengths. And what if we could write them both side by side really quickly, easily, and in this global code mode where you don't have to um, put kind of a signal, like a letter in front of all the functions of either of the libraries, because that's often the way to like avoid conflicts is to call scoping one of them. Um, and that gets super confusing when learning either of the languages to remember when and where you have to put that extra letter can be really tricky. So uh, what did I wanna say? So it starts with revisiting ideas that happen inside of P5 Live and thinking, hey, if I kind of start over, what would I do a little bit better and simpler? For the interface, I was way inspired by Hydra's editor that it's it's like you don't have to have a ton of GUI stuff there um, so that you're quicker in editing. I tried to keep it more minimal. Um, revisiting the way that, that um, sketches work. Actually, I'll come back to that in a bit. I just wanna show you maybe quickly what this means and how it, um, let me make that a bit bigger as a demo. So it was an interesting thing of trying to figure out how to write the sort of the API. How would we um, talk between Hydra and P5 as simple as possible? And then it becomes a weird mashup of each of those frameworks having their own way of doing the things. Uh, Hydra likes to use the word init. P5 likes to use the word get. Um, Hydra uses render. There's a bunch of like, words, uh, pixel density is a P5 thing, and it becomes like a weird hybrid of the two languages. And so basically what happens is, um, this is an example of putting P5 into Hydra, where the only thing I have to write is just P5 dot init. Uh, and that's sending it off to, to Hydra. And then I can say, hey, go grab that first source. Um, and then I can tell Hydra, you're gonna be viewing it, let's hide P5 and let's tell the pixel density to be like 2.0 retina or lo-fi graphics super quick. We can just play with the, the pixel density the same way we would with P5 in the Hydra canvas, uh, which lets you do all kinds of fun, like quasi pixel or super pixelated graphics. <laughs> um, and maybe I already jumped the gun a bit going into those demos. As I was making this, um, we're just kind of realizing, do we need this to be a whole other editor or are those functions I'm baking into this editor possible to extrapolate? And so maybe I just quickly point out, this is a tool called High Five Live, which is like the live coding demonstration of this. Um, but it also exists as a separate library called High Five. So it's like these two things. There's High Five, the JavaScript library, which just has to be imported after you've imported Hydra and P5, and then you have access to all these things. So you could play with this in any environment, or you have High Five Live, which is like an editor uh, that's taking special advantage of these functions um, and kind of compiling the code in special ways if it's P5 code versus if it's Hydra code, trying to, to sort those things out. So I showed like P5 going into Hydra, 
And the opposite, if it's hydro going into P5, we're doing our hydro stuff. And in P5, we just have to say H get, and then that goes and grabs whatever hydro was doing. And it becomes, uh, it dynamically makes a layer. And I use the word H for all of the, these layers for like hydra. So we have like O for outputs, S for sources, um, H for the hydra textures. And then I can put it as a texture on a box. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> um, and then a big question came up, how could we grab multiple outputs? So like here I'm grabbing a single, a single hydra instance and hydra is, is special because you can do like this render to see four different hydras and in p5 live uh there was a weird hacky way of using a loop and building three four five actual canvases which your computer kind of hated but it was possible and then you had to like scope everything was kind of annoying um and in this new way maybe i just jumped to a discord question this is also super nice the community on discord for hydra um where Geika, Geika, Geika. Yeah. Uh, Geika chimed in, Geika chimed in, Olivia chimed in. I was trying to figure out how could we somehow get the four textures out that you can do, the four outputs of Hydra. How could we um, get those out and use them as four separate things inside of P5? And then Olivia had a great idea. Why not just crop parts of the render out? And so that's what happens here. <laughs> Um, maybe I go to this example where basically, whoops, basically this is the, the Hydra render that we see in the back and high five, um, just goes and grabs a quarter of the screen. So we lose a little bit of resolution, but then it's so nice that you can just be drawing four different Hydras inside of high five. We just say H dot render. And what that does is it builds four different textures, H0, H1, H2, H3, and then you can use those in P5. So then you can like be making a wild, crazy thing in Hydra and quickly apply it to different shapes in P5. Um, it also gets really wild when you start feeding them on each other and messing with those. Um, maybe just an example there. Pixel density is quite fun to play with. There's also examples of using the audio from Hydra. It's also super interesting using Hydra's microphone um, and the A.FFT functions or P5's uh, microphone, which is a different kind of way of analyzing the audio. Um, and so some of the audio functions that were in P5 Live for quickly making audio reactive visuals are now in the back end of this. And we just set up, update, and I try to make P5 audio be as kind of close to Hydra audio using A5 instead of A. And so it becomes a weird like mashup of what would P5 do? What would Hydra do? What can the mixture of these two things do? Including adding libraries um, to that combo of the two things. Yeah, so I think uh, maybe I just show you one sketch and one key thing that's different in High Five Live is when we save sketches, it's like a template of what you made. So there's no writing over stuff. Instead, uh, you just remix yourself. So I could just be trying different things or I just want to show you I have this sketch I made in Hydra. Let's add P5 and say, uh, let's make it WebGL. Let's clear or not clear. Let's say h dot get texture h zero and make a box that's three hundred. And I probably have to say p five dot z index one, so it's sitting on top. And let's make a orbit control three. And now I'm like taking that hydra and bringing it into p five. So it's like with two lines of code, I can bring hydra into p five and start doing all kinds of weird stuff. No stroke, sphere, hide. Let's hide Hydra. And now we're inside of a sphere looking at a box from our Hydra sphere. Super quick crash course on this. Uh, it's, it's on there to play with High Five Live. I'm using the offline version, uh, but you could download the library.
to embedding your own tools or mess around with the editor on there. Thank you for checking this out.